Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we're back for another brand new video and today's video is here as promised as it's time once again for me and the to dip our feet into the managerial market, the managerial rumour market if you will and have a wee look and a peek behind the curtain of the names that you're seeing clickbaited on Twitter or what's it called X now, Instagram, whatever you do, you're seeing these names everywhere so let's go ahead and discuss them. I've already talked about Frank Lampard and if you watched that video, you'll know that's kind of went the exact way I wanted it to actually go. A couple of days later, we have moved on. The man had his interview, apparently done well. But again, I don't think there's too many people in that boardroom that can f afford another fan blunder. They're seeing the environment that's actually out there. So we've moved on from there. Now we're heating up and going closer and closer to announcing the Rangers manager as there's another round of interviews for the candidates. And one of the candidates that is on that list is what we're here to talk about today and it's not the one that I actually teased in yesterday's video, it's the one I teased back in the Lampard video because I was going to jump to the man that I really, really want people, a certain Belgian, if you will, some might say it's always a Belgian, uh, I was going to go ahead and do that but I thought let's stick to the original plan that we put in with Lampard, let's build our way up people then shall we and start off with the guy that nobody wanted to Lampard. Let's take a step up to a guy that a lot of people, but I'm just a little bit on the fence with, and that is none other than Kevin Musket. But if history has shown us anything, ladies and gentlemen, the fact that I didn't want Lampard and I'm a little bit about Kevin Musket might mean that he might be the greatest thing since sliced bread. So aye, you've got that gone for you, Kev. If you do, go ahead and get announced. But aye, let's get into it. Let's talk about Kevin Musket, what he'll bring to the table, what's his philosophies, what's his style, and address the couple elephants that's fallen this laddie, whatever his name actually goes. Now to really get our feet wet in terms of the video and sort of appease some people that's currently watching, as I did give you a bit of a jump scare with the Frank Lampard news and the Frank Lampard discussion and I seen a lot of your comments saying the guy's never won anything, what are we actually doing to appease those fans and sort of cool everyone down and start to really turn that trust pilot back on people. There is one thing that will make you happy as there is one clear distinct difference between Kevin Musket as a manager and Lampard as a manager and that's the fact that Kevin has actually won things people and as we get later in, in the video and start discussing what he's done at the club level and what he's achieved as a manager you'll see that so to anyone who wanted someone who knows how to win silverware you have it if we do go ahead and announce Kevin Musket. Something else that you will definitely get people is one formation that is it it is the four three three that's right people we are never escaping the four three three and i can't even say the word slash letter so it's very frustrating for me but he has one philosophy and one style and that is built to go forward chase dude, pressure tempo score it is built upon keeping the ball in play and really suffocating opponents if they do try and sit in it's just keeping it breathless it's no letting them organize it's quick 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 all over the shop i mean the the slow organizers that we have from throwings they might have a heart attack people because this is drastically drastically different than what we've been fed and drip fed people over the last three four five Six, seven, eight, nine. About 12 years, people, we're actually going to have genuine tempo if Musket comes in the door. But, and we're going to address one of those elephants right now, this does sound familiar to a lot of people, and it should, troops, as it's the exact style that we've seen in Scottish football before, formerly by Ange Postacoglu, who is now the Spurs manager and who's doing very, very well there. And it is time at Celtic, say what you want, put the Rangers bias to one side. You have to just admit the man was a sheer success in his style and tempo. Picked up a squad who just lost their biggest title in recent history on their knees. Looked like the, the table had flipped. He galvanised that squad, injected a fresh idea, a fresh philosophy and figured out the best way to really put Scottish teams that park the bus and sit in away is to attack them no he sat and passed the ball boringly side to side in front of them and he got that Celtic team that again looked on the decline completely flipped up and they became the attacking force that they ended up becoming and he's got the job at Spurs and now he's doing tremendously well there so there is genuine success in that style of play it is attacking it does appease the fans and again it must be fun to actually play as a player as you're getting to attack you're getting to actually go and express yourself rather than sit like motionless robots and do the same thing there and there and there 
again. And I know for a fact there's going to be two different schools of thoughts. There's going to be some people that just says, ah, we're just copying Celtic then. That's, this is what this is. So we're just copying Celtic. Because again, they have worked with each other before. And Paul Stokoglu, even recently, has actually talked up Kevin Musket as a coach. And he thinks he's going to be the next Aussie manager to really make that step and continue to put Aussie managers on the actual map. Because everyone is now falling in love with Paul Stokoglu. And Paul Stokoglu is pretty much saying the next guy up, there is another one that's coming in that. His musket was actually a really good interview in that fact and it helped me in this video as well because you're hearing from the horse's mouth they've worked together they know what they're all about but I know there is going to be a lot of people that just look at that and say well we'll just copy and sell to them we're just hoping it works yes that's pretty much how it looks to me in that as well but I do feel like well some people that maybe put that to one side and actually just look at everything that musket brings as a manager attacking football but football played at a high Tempo is exactly what we have been craving and needing as fans for a very, very long time. And for me, I feel like there's the, the two schools of thoughts that's actually out there and I see a lot of the arguments happening on Twitter and even in my comment section of the Frank Lampard video, people said, we should get musket. And I said, no, nah, we're just trying to copy Celtic. I do think they can actually both coexist, ladies and gentlemen, because yes, no matter what you try to talk around it, we are trying to replicate Celtic success with Ange Postacoglu bringing in someone who brings the exact same style. But also, ladies and gentlemen, we are bringing in a style of football that we the fans have wanted and has shown to be a success because football in fact any sport is a copycat sport people right you think of the Bulls with the triangle offense up to date reference if you will if they're on the younger side the warrior the Warriors playing with a free ball under Steph Curry people started copying that now it's became a thing in football tika, uh, the tick attacker sorry I was going to say tick attacker maybe no ladies and gentlemen but Pep Guardiola's style of football that he re reintroduced at Barcelona it just changed everything after Cruyff brought in a similar style about 30, 40 years before that and everyone loved all of that then Pep's getting all the credit for that now everyone copies that it's a copycat world that we live in if there's success there'll be people that tries to replicate it and bring their own success and for me that's exactly what Kevin Musket is a signal to me us seeing a style of play that works and figuring out there's a guy who's very very good at it so let's go and get them. So I don't really know if I've even addressed that or making any sense, but it does to me. You can maybe let me know in the comment section below because again, that is his plan A trips and plan B is the day, plan A even quicker if needed and that's the only thing that he brings to the table he's not going to change or adjust us, he's not going to play free at the back, he's not going to try and bring and introduce this, he will play his style of play that he's played the entire way of his career, never in faltering or change of formation, no matter on injuries or anything, we bring Musket in, we are playing this way in this way only but moving away from maybe the philosophy and the style of play if you will, looking at the man himself, the greyer members of the audience, just like me, ladies and gentlemen, will remember Musket wearing the shirt and remember him as a player. And I think every single one of us can remember he's not exactly shy of confrontation troops. He gets stuck in. He's never been f afraid to stand in someone's face and scream and shout. And to those who's maybe been feeling like me that there's too many that feels like they're on the roost that Rangers now. Doesn't it matter? Look, I can score a couple goals here, there. That's me. Doesn't matter if I've been balling or playing horrendously bad. I think there has been something wrong with that dressing room for a little bit of a while and we've needed a fresh voice to really get into people's faces and demand more and really wake up people who are sleepwalking through games. And if you look at Kevin Musket and as a man, as a player and as a manager, there is one common theme despite his 4 3 3 and that's the fact that he will call it as he sees it and I don't think there'll be too many people that can afford to sleepwalk through games or play as badly week on a week on and expect to be playing the next again week because Musket has shown if you do not perform you do get ousted and uh, if you want an old school drill sergeant who will get in people's faces and let them know the law you're certainly going to have that in Kevin Musket now is that going to be a success with the players that we currently have and how much they seem to spit the dummy out after about a year of performing under managers and start down tooling yeah, it's there to be seen but uh, he's certainly not afraid of the confrontation and I feel like confrontation is something we need a bit more because there again there's too many people sleepwalking and too many people trying to be everyone's best pal 
That's no musket's game at all. So there's your bullet points. 4-3-3, free, free, attacking tempo style, and a guy that's not afraid to call it how it sees it and will call out players if they're not performing and demand standards. Standards that goes in every single game. You know, that word called consistency. I wish the players would actually go ahead and learn it. But that's his backstory. That's there. How's he actually done as a manager? Because you can talk around it all you want, but what's he actually done? What's the proof in the pudding? Well, let's go and have a little look. And we'll start off with Melbourne Victory, his time there as an actual player. In fact, he was actually the longest serving uh, player slash manager ever, Trips. He's the longest serving Melbourne Victory guy ever because he started as a player, worked his way all the way up, assistant manager, and then became a manager. He was there for nearly 15 years in total and brought success both as a player and, more importantly, regarding us right now and where we are. Yeah, of course as he became the only man in football in history to win the Premiership and the Championship, both as a player and a manager, and he went ahead and replicated that feat not only in his first maiden title with Melbourne Victory, but in 2018 when he replicated the exact same feat. So aye, he'd done his own record twice, Trips, not bad little CV, but his time had came, he says he needed there, he had been there for nearly 15 years, as he says, and he moved to Belgium and the Belgium thing just seemed like an absolute mess if I'm honest because he was a massive success at Melbourne Victory when you look at it again his maybe win rate ra ratio and everything won't only jump out to you and look exceptional but again if you look at the wage budget where they are compared to where they were they were certainly punching above their weight and as he did win 96 of his 202 games with 45 draws and 61 losses it's not the the biggest eye-opening stats when you actually look at them but again you have to look at where that club was what what they were expected to do and what he actually achieved. Again, he's revered as an icon, as a legend, and he spoke very highly of there, and again, that's where he learned a lot of his craft. But then he moved on. He decided to move on and get some fresh as he'd been there for so long, and he moved to Belgium troops, and the Belgian spell is very, very interesting for many aspects. One, he had to go through the technical director route and then become the head coach as he didn't have the European coaching badges to become the out-and-out -out manager in Belgium, which probably was showing you that he that just wasn't going to work out because I can't talk this up and I certainly won't try and bamboozle or anything. He failed massively. In Belgium. I mean, we're getting linked with the likes of Scotty Parker and everything up because they uh, rumouredly Graham Souness has recommended everyone said, Look at his right record in Belgium, it's absolutely dreadful. We should be anywhere near Scott Parker. Kevin Musket failed massively in Belgium as well as he played just he managed just fourteen games, having won only two over there before getting booted at the door as it just never worked out. It was awful, it was stinking, it's only bad vibes when you look into that panted after just 14 games where it wasn't working at all and again you can look at that and say well was 14 games enough or was it just going that badly the the, the manager eh, the chairman sorry made the decision that he made I'll leave that one up to you but his time in Belgium was a catastrophic failure troops as he lasted again just 14 games. But every time you fall or every time you fail trips, you're given an opportunity to get back up and try to be a success. And it's great to see Kevin Musket done it because he started off so well in his managerial career, had the Belgian flop, but then bounced back all the way up here for his time in Japan. And again, I want to go into too much detail here because everyone's heard of these stories. Now, everyone knows of these stories, not only because of him, but because, again, Ange Postacoglu left Japan to go to Celtic. Ange po um, Musket was, he's a assistant manager, he took over, he became a success there, Rangers player, Celtic man, we've heard all the stories, we've seen all the clickbait, but what you need to know is his time in Japan was massively a success, and that's why he's obviously still there right now in the Japan media and everything, do not want to lose him, the team do not want to lose him, and if we do bring him in, it will be a massive loss, because that has been not only his time, but again, he was there when Ange was there, that was a time of success and overachieving for a club who's got the ninth biggest budget, that's what you need to remember when we're talking about his time in Japan, and what he's won, and what he's achieved, what they built there was a team with the ninth biggest budget, punching well, and I mean well, 
and pop their weight. With a great 60 wins in 105 games with 16 draws and 27 losses. Again, for a team with the budget, with the resources of that, to go ahead and win what he won, a championship and the equivalent of what is kind of like a community shield or anything like that, has been a tremendous success. And again, it's the style they play. They're, they're constantly punching above their weight. They're always in and around the dance. What he's done in Japan is very, very impressive. And again, a lot of that, I think, is down to the actual philosophy and style because again it's a team that's built to score goals and what wins you games what grabs you points it's putting the ball into the back of the net and you know with that being said that's pretty much today's video people what is he as a manager what could he bring to Rangers what could he change for Rangers I think we've discussed a little bit of it and hopefully you've left today's video knowing just a little bit more about the potential Rangers manager now where I sat and I said at the end of the Lampard video I don't see it actually happening I don't think we'll make the decision because again there will be so much toxicity around it I don't think Musket would bring much negativity I think and I think in a way it's the safe option you know what I mean former Rangers man he knows what it means I didn't really like those connotations anymore because it's failed over the last little while so I'm trying to look beyond actually that there's he is on paper he ticks a lot of boxes he is on paper what we need at the football club and I can see him being a success I'll certainly be hopeful of his success there's just another guy that I just don't know I like a little bit more and by the name of Philippe Clement and we'll speak about that in a day or two but for those who are the Kevin Musket fans that is what you need to know he is on the shortlist he is having another round of meetings he is apparently very keen on that and I know there was a rumour that he wouldn't be able to take over to November or December that's nonsense if he is wanted by Rangers, he will come to Rangers. He's called. So that is on us. What about you? I would love to know your thoughts and opinions on this. Is Kevin Musket the man for you? Let me know down in the comment section below. Or if it's someone else, let me know. And again, we'll be speaking about the next manager in the next day or two as well. Busy days, people. But again, I'll try and bring you the real information that's actually out there and ignore some of the clear and obvious clickbait nonsense that's out there just filling the space with nonsense so aye there's another genuine Rangers candidate what you think let me know down and as always I've been CJ over 92 thank you so much for watching all the best and bye bye